started running out of breath. Uh, for me to climb the stairs at work took two to three, four rest stops so I could stop and catch my breath. Walking from the parking lot to the office took four or five stops so that I could catch my breath. So clearly something was wrong. I was a healthy guy a year and a half ago. I was working out, I was running, uh, by all appearances in good shape. And I passed out twice in one day, could have been driving. I could have, I was, in one case I was working out, I had 145 pounds over my neck. None, none of those two times I passed out happened then. The cardiologist here sent me down to a specialist at Cedars sinai did a heart biopsy and said, well, we'll get back to you in a month because that's how long it usually takes to culture the tissue. Well, he called me the next day. Turns out I have an extremely rare disease called giant cell myocarditis. So they said, you have to come in. We have to get your heart stabilized. It's a progressively degenerative disease, and we have to stabilize that degeneration of your heart. So I went in and started a 44-day stint at Cedars sinai and was, uh, came to realize that there was only one way out of this. Uh, I needed a transplant. I was put on the list where the waiting began. And those are probably the longest days of, in anyone's life is waiting for hope, waiting for something to come through that you know you need to save your life. And in some respects, it's the way Jesus is always there for people that feel they're out of hope. I don't know how people who don't know Jesus could go through something like that and not have a sense of comfort for what would happen if they die. I just knew it was not my time. And I also knew that if it was my time, that so be it. I can, I can become with Jesus. My only concern would have been for Susie and the people that I would have left behind. But I knew that, that I was being taken care of either way but a deep part of me felt that now is not my time. And all of a sudden, all those days of waiting and wondering whether it was gonna be an abyss I'd be constantly stating into were gone. And the response was simply shock, just shock. I knew that this day was coming, that that day of hope had finally arrived. And from that point for the next uh, 24 hours was a flurry of activity. I had to lie on the table for what seemed like in eternity while they were prepping the other the other heart and getting everything ready and the mask came on and I could feel myself drifting off I just kept repeating the power and the peace of Jesus and I woke up less than 12 hours later uh, had me sit up a couple hours after that and that night I had what I laughing refer to as my first supper as opposed to the last supper uh, solid food and they had me up and walking within 24 hours. And the whole thing was just one series of miracles after another. In my case, it was the physical heart that was put into me. In the case of receiving the good news, it's receiving the heart of Jesus. Because that is, that is, to me, the difference that he has brought to the world. Is It's a personal thing. This is his heart for you, and his heart becomes our standard and his love becomes the love that we can latch onto and realize it's a universal love at one point, but at the same point, it's a very deeply personal love.